Hey, what's going on, everybody? Got some big news from NBA Top Shot today surrounding the set rewards for Series 4, which was some big news that we had been waiting for since the announcement of the leaderboards, basically, where they said they were going to announce the rewards for the set. So we're going to look at that in this one. I promise I'm not just going to read the blog for the entire thing. We're going to get into some strategy because I, I hate just giving straight information here when I give in some some strategy and some talk around this and my thoughts on it. If you guys didn't check out the last video, definitely check it out after this. It's what I'm buying on Top Shot. Haven't made one of those in months, so it was good to make one of those and you should definitely check it out. Definitely my favorite type of video to make. It'll be the end card of this also linked down in the description. So for this one, I I promise I'm not going to read this for the whole video just for the first minute to basically go over it. So to actually get any reward out of your set, now you have to lock it, which a lot of people are scared to lock, but you are going to have to lock it to get utility out of it. We do have a ton of time to decide if we want to actually lock these sets because it says the first reward's not going to be coming until after January 5th. So we have up until then to decide if we actually want to lock our sets. And then from January 5th, to May 30th, there's going to be another reward in locking anything after May 30th. You're not going to get anything essentially. So what do you get if you lock your sets? If you lock a legendary set, which probably most people watching this don't have a legendary set, you're going to get a legendary pack, three metallic gold packs. Uh, so you get a lot. And then priority access to some upcoming drops in Series 4, which is another thing because they said series four is going to be pretty limited it could be even more limited min counts than we think and these drops could be pretty scarce and hard to get into the drops. so priority access is a big thing so for locking a metallic gold set you get three metallic gold packs for locking rare sets like base set cool cat or metallic silver you're going to get a rare pack two blended packs priority access and then for locking common sets which includes vintage vibes you're going to get two blended packs and a potential priority access to at least one pack drop in Series 4. So I would think most people watching this, including myself, really the only sets I'm going to be going after and have are in this last category. So I'm going to focus on this. My question here is what are blended packs? I listened to a bit of the Twitter spaces and they asked about blended packs. I didn't really hear a great answer. I'm pretty sure there's going to be like those all-star packs, if you remember, where... It was like a 60% chance to get three just common base moments. And then it was like a 25% chance or something to get the uh, common LE moment from the All-Star Rising Stars set. And then it was like a 10% or even less chance to pull a rare. So that might be what that is. And honestly, they could be worth like 10 bucks at minimum maybe per pack. So not like a huge reward there. So... For me, I mean, the rest of this doesn't really matter. It's not really that relevant. Nine Lives Lounge and WNBA. But for this, not a great reward, in my opinion, for locking these sets. But then again, another question I had I should have asked in the Twitter spaces. It just seems weird to me jumping in there and, and talking on Twitter like that. But I wanted to ask more about the blended packs. I don't think we got a good answer. And then my second question was... Are you still going to get the airdrops around pack drops? Like, if you own the Hustle and Show Series 3, are you going to get airdropped one of the Series 4 packs when Hustle and Show drops? I don't think they addressed that. If anyone knows, let me know down in the comments. But they definitely did that last year. We're holding a common set from the set before you got airdropped something. So I want to know that as well. Uh, just interested in that it doesn't really affect locking or not or I guess it does if, if you have to lock it to do that or not so that would be one of my questions now let's talk strategy so to get in that last set drop if you want to we can just come over here just go to evaluate market click on top shot and then sets and you can see the cheapest set besides these WNBA ones is hustle and show series 3 213 bucks if you did one of the challenges and have half the moments, it's not going to be that hard to complete the full set. If you have a few of the moments, it might, might be close to 200 bucks, which is kind of a lot. And 
might not be worth it in my opinion. Two hundred thirteen dollars for two blended packs. That I don't think the combination of those are going to be worth over two hundred thirteen bucks. To be honest, so I don't know if it would be worth it to even do the lowest one. And then if we are looking, so that's the other thing. It's a little hard to tell which packs actually count because they don't break or what sets actually count because they don't fully break them down but i'm guessing if they just say all other nba sets so i guess it's everything besides base cool cats and metallic silver fall under here so i guess we're really looking to see to get into this if the base or the metallic silver is cheaper but there are actually rare sets that are cheaper. And then there were Fords 1800 which is a good amount. And I don't think I missed one. I don't think early adopters. So so unless I missed one, the and then there were four set here. It's going to be the cheapest of that like next tier to, to get into that set drop. So the other thing I want to talk about around sets is team sets. And... This is something that I think has been missed with the whole team leaderboard thing is the team sets. And I'll show you guys why. Because if you come down here and you keep scrolling until they give you the team checklist section here, it kind of takes like two steps to actually get to this blog post. But you come down and they said they're going to be announcing this before the end of July, and I don't know if they really made an official announcement, but if you click on this link, it takes you to this blog post, which was posted on May 18th. So I guess it was posted just a long time ago, but if you scroll really far down, you could see for every team checklist a collector completes, they're awarded team score for the corresponding team as follows. 10,000 points for completing each team series checklist. So these are awarded for your team score to the corresponding team. 10,000 points. This is actually another question I had, and I'm not 100% certain on this. If just completing a Series 3 or Series 2 team series checklist actually gets you 10,000 points towards the team leaderboard, if it does, that's a massive bonus, and some of these are really cheap. So if we go to like the Cleveland Cavaliers, for example, because I'm close to completing the Series 3 and Series 2 of this, the Series 3 is like 80 bucks, and the Series 2, I think, is like 60 bucks. So you get a 20000 bonus towards your team leaderboard on the Cavs for basically putting in $130, which would put you in the top 200 on the Cavs right now. That seems pretty good, and 130 bucks to get just that first duo's reward. I think the duo could be worth more than 130 on its own, and then you're going to get all the rewards that come with it as well. So this is another question that I had and I should have asked, but if you guys know if, if what I'm talking about is true, definitely let me know. If it's wrong, also definitely let me know before I lock my Cavalier set and uh, try to go for these 10,000 point bonus towards these team leaderboards. But I'm fairly certain that's what it does mean. So, all right, guys, so in this one, I just wanted to go over the new set rewards for Series 4, my thoughts on them, and then also just that little tidbit on the team sets for the leaderboards. I think that's just kind of a hidden gem. If I'm not misreading the situation here completely, that seems like a, an easy shortcut to get 20,000 additional team leaderboard points i mean otherwise twenty thousand points toward the leaderboard would cost two thousand dollars if you're spending in the market versus 130 buying the uh the team set so just something to think about and i want to say it again i'm not sure if what i'm talking about is exactly accurate it just seems like it is to me but definitely gonna have to look more into that and confirm in a later video but i appreciate you guys for checking this one out if you enjoyed it subscribe to the channel check out the what i'm buying video here and I'll see you guys in another one.